Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, Tangerine's life path was forever altered when she discovered a brand new little baby in the swamps. It almost seems like the bluebirds and the crabbits themselves were trying desperately to block her path. They clearly wanted her to run into this little guy, and it seems like they don't want her following Carol and her family anymore. So I think in this episode, she's probably going to turn around back down the shore and see if she can discover her little brother again. Little Percy, who is even starting a family of his own too. So I guess she could bring Dukta around to play with the little babies, as long as he doesn't get too close because he is very sick. He probably was trying his hardest to get her attention just for that purring magic, and so far it is working wonders. I'm sure he's going to try his best to repay her with all of these poison berries, though she is probably going to try her best to convince him otherwise. Has nobody ever stopped to help you before little Dukta? I mean, she probably figures that that's just her duty, being one of the creatures with the purring snout and all. She knows she's here to keep the tribe safe and to keep everybody happy and healthy. So pretty soon you're going to have lots of friends your age, Lots of creatures to play around with. But first, I do want to go back here to make sure that Carol is scooping up her fish. Pretty soon, she's going to make her way deeper into these dark, twisted swamplands. I guess she'll be going right alongside her sister. Now that these two bright creatures have been reunited. And now that Lala, the bad influence that she is, is off playing on her own. Actually, I wonder if she's getting a little bit curious about these coconut trees. In fact, before Mulberry can even stop her, maybe she'll scoot on over here, right where this coconut is already laying, and try her best to knock down some more. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, that's what I was hoping for. Hopefully, as long as we use the tiles where the coconuts are already laying, we won't risk getting our creatures hit. So, I guess she's not such a bird brain after all, now is she, Mulberry? I feel like he probably wasn't very impressed with her. He probably figured that she had nothing good to offer to the tribe. But now he's starting to wonder if he may have misjudged her. She had to have found a way to survive after all, all on her own. And I wonder if it was just from these coconut trees. They are a wonderful way for us to sustain ourselves. Especially for the creatures who don't have the toxic body. Though they do still need to be careful. Oh my gosh, poor Rai. How on earth did you take so much damage? Do they add damage to their lifespans like every single time you reload the game? Because I swear there was only like a sliver on her lifespan before. Oh, Percy, you're going to have to see if she's okay pretty soon. We don't want her taking too much damage after all. I suppose we could bring Sunshine into the grass first. She could do a little bit of sniffing around just to see if there are any roots out here. Though unfortunately, it seems like it's only the poison berries. And we know, since she has those two digging paws, it's not going to be much use for her. She's also stumbled into another one of these little puddles where those bugs can spawn. So she's going to have to be very, very careful. Maybe we could have Tangerine come down to the shores, just to see if she can scout around for any shells. Anything to offer up to Duke down their journey? She knows it's a long one back to where Percy is, and she wants to make sure that he's going to have the energy to do so. Especially with those pesky bugs. Oh no, it looks like they got to you too. Oh, poor little Duke Da. Good thing we gave him the healing magic now, because he won't be moving for a while. But let's go check out the new little baby. Oh, she looks so much like her father. They actually have the exact same fur color, and thank goodness she has that stinky tail too. So she should be able to keep her tribe made safe just like her mother, at least when it comes to the sleeping sickness. I actually think we're going to name this baby Rosethorn. It seems particularly fitting thanks to her rosy color and that Baryena claw too. You know, she has the Baryena claw and the nimble fingers. So, not only can she pack quite a punch, but she can also go searching for some shells for her family. Maybe she'll even find joy in picking up the coconuts, just like so many of our other creatures. And oh my goodness, Rai, thank goodness she is finally done being dazed by those coconuts. 
Maybe it's time that we scoot you out of the way of danger. We'll have her pick up the rest of them, though. I feel like she deserves that much. She has been sitting underneath those leaves for days, just waiting for a moment to shine. And just as I had figured, it looks like Kois has also caught the sleeping sickness. But I feel like she's going to stay around the nests anyway. Probably collecting those coconuts, just like her big sister. She is a bit too timid to go exploring. Her little brother, I feel, is going to be a completely different story. It turns out that he's one of the sneakiest creatures we have ever seen. He has two velvet paws and the lean body. And with a six in stealth, I think that means he should be able to evade things like the hearing ape once we do go to this next jungle biome. So I'm sure he's going to make for a very, very sneaky little ninja prince. Maybe he'll even be the one to take on those bluebird feathers. But for now, Ra Ra, I guess you're going to have to just pick up the berries. I wish we had somebody who could come over here and take care of your baby for you, because I would love to have her lunge in and pick up some more. There's just not really enough able bodies at the moment. Unless maybe we bring Foxtrot down here to have her next baby. I do want to see if she can have one more before she passes, and she is on the very final day of her life. She is lucky that she chose Persimmon as a mate, though, because he is very connected to the ancestors so I'm sure it'll be quite easy for her to communicate through him. So if we move her over here, we'll have him try to breed with her. Looks like it worked, so she should be able to scoot down to the nest and plop down another one right next to tiny little Nutanu. I feel like that's awfully fitting of these two. They always made such good friends. Of course, on her very, very final day, she would want to come see Rara just before she passes. So thank you for watching after the Poison Prince. We're going to scoot on over here and grab some more of these poison berries. I'm sure that Rara would even offer them up to Foxtrot as well. It's been a while since she last had them as a snack, since Rara and her family are the only poison fanged creatures she knows. And I just love how this bluebird is still swooping like a rain between these two territories. It's pretty clear that he's trying to lead you back toward your brother. But I don't think Tangerine is going to go too far, because she wants to make sure that Dukta is still going to be able to catch up. We could have her come down here, maybe? Oh, even that much is separating you two? That's not good, but I do want her to try to find some shells. Unfortunately, it looks like all of the Krabbits have packed up and left, and they've taken their shells with them. We always seem to find the Krabbits and the shells together. Well, I guess for now, let's bring you back here then, as long as it's not too close to those bugs. Yeah, you've put yourself in a little bit of a sticky situation, between a rock and a hard place, but there's no way you're leaving this baby behind. Well, at least he has plenty of company in all of these fish. Seems like Dukta is making quite a few friends in the ocean. I wonder if he's going to want to explore those waters at some point in the future too. So are we ready to take Carol deeper into the swamps? It looks like Sunshine unfortunately was infected with a sleeping sickness, so I'm sure she would want to come up here anyways, just to make sure that her sister is okay. They still can't really smell any roots though. And you know, I don't think they ever got the chance to bury their parents, so they're probably starting to panic by now. I mean, that's not a very good way to impress your ancestors, is it? They have a one job, and they can't even find one little root. I mean, at this point, Carol is probably feeling like the biggest failure of the Bluebird Feathers. I'm sure she would open up to her sister about that too. Not only has Adam seemed to abandon their side of the family, but now her own family members are going off in different directions too. That's gotta be pretty hard for her to swallow. But Sunshine has always been known for being a very happy-go-lucky creature. So hopefully she'll find a way to show Carol the bright side. Now do you think you could show us some of that fancy footwork again, Lala? Maybe Mulberry would nudge her forward to shake the tree again, knock down some more of those delicious coconuts in the process. We'll have to scoot you back though because it does look like there are quite a few bugs. You know, I wonder if we should maybe think about starting a family between these two? Wouldn't that be the strangest pair? We have Sirius and Surly Mulberry, 
And then the supposed bird brain Lala, who loves nothing more than to just sing and play. But after seeing this other side of her, I feel like she's really started to thaw Mulberry's heart. So is there any way that we could get some helpful babies out of them? Maybe some with the stinky tails or the toxic bodies? Just somebody to use those nimble fingers and really pick up more of those points and berries for us. That way we won't be straying so close to the end of our supplies. I think what I'll do is place the toxic body into both of their mutation menus. One in one of her slots and one in one of Mulberry's. I'm pretty sure that he does actually have it in his inactive traits, so hopefully that'll make it more likely to see it on their babies. Then as for his other slot, maybe we should just go with a stinky tail. We do need some way to keep those bugs away after all. Should Alala perhaps be the same? Yeah, let's go ahead with the stinky tail for both of them, so both of their mutation menus are going to be the exact same. We'll have him breed with her, and then on the next turn she should be able to set down her nest. It's just as well too because there aren't any more coconuts right here for her to use as cover. We have one down in the tide pools, but I suppose she could even show her baby how to do her trick instead. So maybe she'll leave that there for them in the future. Now we could have little Nutanu maybe toddle his way out of the nest, getting ready to scoop up all of those poison berries of course. But Persimmon doesn't really have much else to do. Oh my gosh, there's a root over here? Wait a second, Persimmon, maybe you could actually bury your parents? Oh my gosh, with the bluebird right over his head too? Yeah, something tells me that this bluebird is a little bit more connected to our ancestors than we thought. Not only is it leading Tangerine straight back to her little brother, but it also led Persimmon straight over to the root. I suppose it always could have been trying to get Sunshine's attention too, but with Carol being so set on diving deeper and deeper into those swamps, she just never really gave it the time of day. I think we should be ready to skip the turn though, so let's go back to the little baby inside this nest now, because I still want to make sure that they're not going to have the healer's curse. Okay, it looks like she has the purse now, but thank goodness she's alright. She has that stinky tail. She'll be able to purr for all of her tribe mates. Oh my gosh, she is actually super cute and super, super fierce. Oh, the fiercest little kitty we have seen in quite some time. And nice and strong to defend her tribe from the Berginas. She's almost going to be like a little warrior healer, I guess. A great one for us to take on our adventures. I think we'll actually name this little baby Catmint seems like a pretty good name for someone with a purse now. And now that Nutanu has his second gem, he should be able to keep her nice and safe and very well fed too. So both of the healer's babies were super, super lucky, and I'm so glad that that was the case. I guess it's because Persimmon was so open to the idea of listening to his ancestors, so they gave him just a little bit of extra luck along the way. Maybe it was even partially due to Solaris? Persimmon's family may not have been the ones to give him those offerings, but I feel like he's still very connected to the set of the family regardless. So knowing that Persimmon has allied himself with Rara may have been just enough to push Solaris over the edge. Now let's scoot Rara right into this puddle back here. That does mean that she might attract some flies, but thanks to her stinky tail, she should be just fine. That gives her the chance to scoop up all of these poison berries and the coconuts too, so I think it's a pretty good position for her to be in. Now as for poor little Rai, maybe it's time that you finally made your way back to your family. I do want her to get some of that healing magic on her as well, before we send her out exploring. I would imagine that the rogue male is probably gone by now. He really didn't have that much longer in his lifespan anyways so it might be safe for us to explore the ports again. Though I suppose safe is really a relative term. If that is truly the Baragina's lair, then I suppose none of our creatures will be truly safe. That's why we'll need to train up our new little baby cat meant to be the warrior her ancestors intended. Oh, poor, poor little Duke Da. It looks like he's still very, very sick, and those pesky bugs are just not giving him a rest. He just can't seem to pick any more of those poison berries. 
I'm sure that Tangerine is looking over her shoulder and probably feeling very, very bad about herself too. I mean, how could she possibly jump in there to save him when she's only going to get infected by the sleeping sickness herself? That's no way to save her new baby. So maybe it is time that she makes her way up to Percy's side. Because if she gets to know this new little baby with her stinky tail, maybe Rosethorn could actually save Dukta. Maybe that's why she was brought here all along. She knows this child is still very, very young, and she knows it is an awful lot to ask of Percy to let her take her daughter deep into the swamps. But I think that Percy trusts his daughter to be safe, and I don't think he really has it in him to see any little baby suffer all on his own in the dark. So he'll allow it, but only if he gets to purr for little Rosethorn first. That way she'll have some little healing magic to take herself. And maybe that means we can finally bring him over here, so he should be able to purr for Ryan on the next turn. The poor thing really, really needs some of your healing magic too. Now let's have Lala plop down her nest, right in the middle of all these bug swarms, so fingers crossed that Stinky Tail is going to pull through. We'll have Mulberry pick up the coconuts for you, your very favorite snack. And then I suppose you could waddle down to the tide pools as well because that one extra coconut is just calling his name. I know we were meant to save it for his baby, but I don't think he can resist. Now let's see if anything has spawned in the swamplands overnight. Aside from those bugs, of course. No, I still don't see anything out in the darkness for you guys. I'm starting to get very, very worried that we might not find anything at all. Poor Sunshine can't even make her way around all these bugs, because the sleeping sickness just has her so beat. I guess for now, all we can do is see if her sister can find something. Oh, she found a nest? Oh, right by the water side too? Oh, with the poison berries by it as well? You know, that would actually make an excellent base. If she did have a baby, she could feed it with the fish in the stream, the poison berries. Maybe this is a good sign after all? A good sign that somebody is out there watching out for them. So maybe Sunshine isn't so crazy after all. See, Carol? The ancestors haven't abandoned you entirely. You just have to keep an open mind and be willing to accept their signs. And I think this is a very, very good one. Maybe they're even hoping that she is going to settle down sometime soon. Maybe that means that somebody is out here lurking around the darkness as well. Maybe she's bound to run into her soulmate if she keeps searching. And it's kind of hilarious how Carol and Lala are on opposite sides of the stream, but they both basically had the same idea. Lala's going to have her be beyond this turn, though. So let's cross our fingers that it'll be healthy. This is another situation where they do share an immunity gene. So there is a possibility that their baby could be cursed with a sickness, too. But what I really want to see is a baby with a stinky tail. So fingers crossed it's all going to work out for us. You know, I'm not sure if it did. Oh my goodness, what terrible luck. Not only does this baby not have a single trace of the toxic body, but it looks like he's also inherited that no paw of his mother's. Though I guess the one silver lining is that he does have the nimble fingers, so at least he can still pick up the coconuts like his mother. But he is very, very sick, so not the best of omens for this family, I'm afraid. In fact, true to his story, it would seem as if the bugs have turned on you once again, Mulberry. Once again, you are just cursed with bad luck. I wonder if we could just set up one more baby between them, though. Lala only has one last day remaining on her lifespan. And I mean, just because this little baby didn't have the best of luck, doesn't mean that one of his siblings wouldn't be better off. As far as his name goes, I think we'll name this little guy Guava. He definitely looks like he's going to take after his mother to me, so a nice goofy name would probably be best. Mulberry is about to have his hands full. He thought it was bad enough just dealing with his mate's antics, but now he's going to have, hopefully, two babies to wrangle in the meantime. Now let's just make sure that nothing is spawned off in the grasses. Oh! Oh my gosh, hello! 
We have somebody out in the darkness right next to our baby. Do you know this creature? Well, Rose Thorn has her second gem now, so we could probably bring both Tangerine and her up this way. Oh my goodness! Look at you! He's actually sick too. That is very, very strange, but awfully fitting. Do you think maybe these two are related? Maybe Vanku is actually Dukta's father? Or grandfather, even. Look at that gray mane. Oh my gosh, I wonder if he's been searching for him, like, all this time. And I'm so glad to see that claw on him, too. Even the antennas and his inactive traits and the peacock tail, just like Dukta. Well, this is a very, very interesting development. Rose Thorin, why don't you scoot on ahead? Because it would be very nice if you could block some of those pesky bugs with your stinky tail. We'll have her jump all the way up here, so hopefully Dukta can escape. And you're going to want to get out of the way, too. We don't want him getting any of our creatures sick, and I definitely want to invite him with some of our extra food. But in order to do that, we're going to have to make sure that we're scooping up each and every last one of our poison berries. As long as he doesn't get too far away. Do you think maybe he's looking for some poison berries to eat of his own? He actually doesn't have a way to grab them. Unfortunately, he's just like Sunshine, and he can't pick from any of the poison berry bushes. Maybe that's why he's been struggling so much. Oh, the poor thing. I wish we had more food to spare. I guess we'll bring Tangerine up next to little Dukta's side, and we'll just cross our fingers that he comes back. He must be a little bit nervous. Maybe he didn't realize that his grandson has been taken in, and he thinks these creatures are here to chase him out of the territory. Well, if he does end up going around the bend to these tide pools, he's going to be in for quite the surprise, because grumpy old Mulberry isn't very likely to share his bounty with any strangers. So hopefully he decides to turn back for some more friendlier shores, and we'll see if we can track him down in the next episode. It seems like the other side of the island just gets all the luck, doesn't it, Carol? Even down to the Wanderers? I mean, I suppose there's always the chance that somebody could still be in these dark, twisted pathways. It's just going to take somebody very, very brave to do the exploring. So Carol has a lot of thinking to do over the next night or two, but I'm sure a little bit of meditation by the stream will bring her more clarity. So for now, Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!